Lord be with you. This morning, we continue to build our prayer wall with these strips of purple with your prayers on them. And remember, that goes in the offering plate as that is passed later in the service. Please stand as you are able for the call to worship. As we are called into worship today, it is sobering to remember that when God appeared on earth in the person of Jesus, most of the world did not recognize him and therefore did not worship him. Today we ask for faith that will open our eyes to see Jesus for who he is, that we might worship him in truth. People of God, behold and see your God. We open our eyes to see his glory we open our ears to hear his wisdom. We open our hands to offer him gifts. We open our mouths to sing his praise. We open our hearts to offer him love. Christ is Lord.
We sing, we wave our branches, we shout Hosanna. Then we turn away to go back to our old ways, our old lives, our old sins. But God grants forgiveness and in doing so fills us with new life. Let us together confess to the one who comes to us to fill us with grace. Gracious God, we thankfully remember the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we also acknowledge our failure to respond earnestly and faithfully to his witness. We often mistake Jesus for a mere earthly king, friendly companion, or problem solver, failing to see him as the ruler of all creation. We do not appreciate the depth of his passion and sacrifice on the cross, failing to acknowledge him as our way of salvation. Even in this Lenten season, we have not walked faithfully in the way of Jesus Christ. Forgive us, we pray, and bring us ever more fully into the joy of union with Jesus Christ, our Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Christ died for our sins. He made a full atonement for us. Know that we are forgiven and that we have the promise of eternal life. Feel that forgiveness in your heart. Rejoice and sing with loud hosannas. Believe in the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. And now, having received God's grace, let us rejoice and share the peace with one another, saying, Peace of Christ be with you. To prepare our hearts for the hearing of God's word, let us pray. Eternal God, whose word silences the shouts of the mighty, quiet within us every voice but your own. Speak to us through the suffering and death of Jesus Christ, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we may receive grace to show Christ's love in lives given to your service. Amen. Please listen now to a reading from the Gospel of Matthew, 
chapter 21, verses 1 to 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples did, went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the streets and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of them and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet, Jesus, from Nazareth in Galilee. The word of the Lord. This Sunday is often called Palm Sunday, but it is often called Passion Sunday. And so now we make the transition in the week from celebrating, um, rejoicing in our King, moving and making the journey to the cross. So hear God's word for us this day. Now Jesus stood before the governor, that is Pilate, and the governor asked him, 
Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, you say so. But when Jesus was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But Jesus gave them no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for, for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they gathered, Pilate said to them, whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? All of them said, let him be crucified. Then he asked, why, what has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and he washed his hands before the crowd saying, I am innocent of this man's blood, see to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, his blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I now invite the children to join me up here on the steps. And bring your palm branches. Hi. Hey, do you all know why we're waving these today? I want to see how you can wave them. Let's see how high you can do it. Oh, yeah. Here, so you can have one too. All right. Woohoo! Good job. Do you know why we're why we're waving these today? Yeah, that's really good. Because a long time ago, people were so excited about who Jesus was that they had a huge parade for him. Isn't that cool? They had a huge parade for him, and they waved these, and they laid their jackets on, on the ground so Jesus wouldn't get dirty. Well, then something kind of hard happened. No. Yes, he realizes it. He knows. Does anybody know what happens this coming week, what we celebrate or remember? He died, that's right, that's right. But then, but then what happened after that? He rises from the grave. Yeah, he rises from the grave. That's exactly right. So today and this week, it's kind of hard because we remember that Jesus died for us, that he was so awesome that he would, s say that again, sweetheart? To take away our sins, exactly right. So this week, I want you to do a couple of things. I want you to thank God a lot. Can you do that for me? Maybe before or at your, at your dinner table when you pray, say, thank you, God, for Jesus. Thank you, God, for Jesus. Yeah. And I also want you to remember that what did you, how did Jesus live when he was alive? Was he mean to people? No. He was, and he healed people, right? And he taught them how to pray, 
He taught them how to be kind. He did all these awesome things. And I know you all have learned a lot, too, from Jesus. So I want you to do one extra thing this week that Jesus taught you, to be kind and to do something you wouldn't normally do for someone else. Can you do that for me this week? Two things. Say thank you every day to God for Jesus and to do one extra kind, special thing for somebody this week. Okay? Okay. Will you um, join me in prayer? Can you grab a hand of someone next to you? Why don't you come up here, sweetheart? Hey, JC, let's hold hands, bud. We're going to pray. Here. Okay, can you hold her hand right behind you? All right. And repeat after me, okay? Dear God, God. thank thank you for Jesus. Thank you for life eternal. Thank you for second chances. In Jesus' name, name. amen. 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 All right. Why don't you all head off with uh, Mrs. McAvoy downstairs to Godly Play, and you get to hear the story all over with cool little figurines and Godly Play. Bye, sweetheart. You can do it. It's okay. Come on. I know. Come on. I'll see you in a little bit. Okay. Bye. Makes me feel good. My kids like me. <laughs> well, they say hindsight is twenty twenty, but that's really only if you're paying attention. Most of the time, we follow the saying. Distance makes the heart go grow fonder. Let me give you an example. I have three siblings, and a number of year, years ago, we decided to take a vacation every summer together. It was just the beginning, right? We were all getting married, starting to have kids. It was the early idealistic years. And the first summer was really fun. We rented a cottage. But after about four days, the time drug on a little bit, and it was clear that a full week to be around one another like that, all in one space, was a little too much. Can I get an amen? (laughs) After a year of distance from the previous cottage renting, the next summer we said, let's do it again. That was so great. We conveniently forgot how the summer before the last few days, we were all ready to not be there. And mind you, I love my siblings. And it was great for that first four days again. And then we all started to get annoyed with each other. Who's kit cleaning? Whose kid is crabby? It got to the point where children's balloons were popped, in-laws stomped off, and the last morning we cleaned really fast so we could all get out of there. Needless to say, we haven't spent that much time together since then, and that was eight years ago. (laughs) Now we remember to practice the family four-day, three-night rule. It works so much better. I say all of this to call attention to the reality of the week ahead of us. We've just gotten to Jerusalem. We've welcomed a king, we've celebrated him, and we anticipate what lies ahead in the week to come. I wouldn't be surprised if some of you were thinking, why is she reading about Jesus being sent to be crucified? It's only Palm Sunday. I hope for you, as for me, a small gulp formed in your throat and has caused you to pause. Pause, because so many of us want to jump to Easter. But we have a choice now. We can quickly swallow that knot in our throat after hearing how easily Pilate turned Jesus over to be crucified, or we can practice remembrance. Freeze the frame. Ponder. Not simply to make ourselves feel bad, but to remember, to, but to practice remembering so that we then can practice our faith in deeper and more profound ways in a world that is in desperate need 
of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We can remember what got Jesus to the cross in the first place, standing before threatened religious authorities, complicit public servants swayed by the political pressure, and an angry mob dragging him up a hill to be crucified. We can remember, reflect, and be transformed, or we can move about life as normal and going through the motions of the ordinary. But we know there's something there. There's a reason we sit in these pews, that we read scripture, that we have faith and seek to be faithful to God. But we don't always know why we do. We don't always feel it or are intentional about it. I invite you this week to practice remembrance and remember how extraordinary our story is. This week, above all weeks, is the week that it is vital we remember. This is the week that changes the course of the world. Business cannot be done as usual this week. This is the week where our understanding of power, of justice, and of love are completely turned on its head. Practicing remembrance helps us see that it is fear guiding and ultimately winning this drama that leads us to the cross. First, it's the religious authorities that fear changes. Ha ha ha, never heard that one before. The religious authorities that fear change. Alternative interpretations, perceived tampering with the traditional law that Jesus taught and lived. Things like turn the other cheek, elevating mercy over punishment, the forgiveness before retaliation, and spending time with the poor rather than the popular and well-off. The religious authorities were fearful of the destruction, the change of who they were and understood themselves to be. Pilate fears the loss of power, of respect, of authority. Pilate shown as a man of conviction and knowing that Jesus is innocent. I mean, his wife even tells him. But Pilate succumbs to the pressure. And then there's the crowd. Oh, the crowd. I parallel this mob to what I see going on social media these days. People riling one another up about what's going on in our country, post after post, one feeding off another and another, and in the end, all we have is a lot of noise and not a lot of truth. The attraction and power of reactivity fuels this crowd, and perhaps underneath all the racket is fear that there is another way without the flashy drama a sacred way, a more difficult way that resists dominance and finds power and weakness in rest and defensiveness and in the unassuming. So here we are. We see it. The injustice, the wrongdoing, the lack of integrity. But can we then practice remembrance of who and what Jesus brought to this place? How he lived that would bring him to this place where people would act this way and bring him to a cross? Do we stand with Jesus as the faithful ones or do we stand at a distance like Pilate, happy to proclaim our own innocence and pointing the finger at another's brokenness, another's lack of integrity, and another's lack of mercy. Practicing remembrance this week calls us to stand taller, to dig deeper, to truly be faithful, to stand with Jesus as we embark on lives of faith that illustrate to the world the kingdom that he proclaimed. The conventions of our world are not always those that the gospel proclaims. 
which asks us to set aside our fear in order to listen to the call of discipleship. During Lent, we have heard a number of stories that do illustrate what our Lord was about. That's how we practice remembrance. The temptations, the healings, the raising of Lazarus from the dead. When we remember, we are again convicted, empowered to face the world that so easily distracts and coercively captures our wallets, our desires, and even our egos. But the gospel is telling us this day, if there ever was a week to remember, to practice remembering, this is the week. This is the week where business cannot be as usual. What Jesus stands for was never about good sermons, or amazing church buildings, or yes, even incredible organs. What Jesus stood for was ushering in the kingdom of God. It was to proclaim Christ crucified and to live a life worthy of that calling. Practice remembrance this week. Remember who you are, loved, claimed, forgiven. Remember what you are called to as a disciple. Practice out, out what you seek to remember and hear, that God is love, that the way of Jesus Christ brought him to a cross, a cross, and that our lives of faith will bring us to those hard and desperate places as well. And Jesus leads us to a cross and is with us. As Jesus journeyed to Jerusalem with palms waving, you think he knew that they didn't understand what kind of king he was? What kind of kingdom he was really ushering in? Some of them did. But then like us, they all forgot and denied him again and again. Even his best students. We'll get to hope. We'll talk about hope next week. We'll celebrate the great gift we have received. But for this moment, for this week, let us practice remembrance. Remember Christ. What got him here to this week. And whether our practice of faith illustrates to the world the absurdity of a God who dies that all might live. Let us stand with Jesus and remember the good news, the radical world turning it up, it's on its head message. Can we remember? Can we remember believe, and follow.
be seated. A note about this morning's offering. Today we will be receiving our denomination-wide uh, offering uh, called the One Hour Great Hour of Sharing. Um, proceeds from this offering go to the Presbyterian Disaster Assistance, which many of you are familiar with. They came in and helped um, years ago when the flood was here. Um, the Presbyterian Hunger Program, which serves people all over the world in need and who are hungry. And then thirdly, the self-development of people, which offers grants to those who are helping themselves. So let us give this morning of our life and of our labor to God.
Let us pray. We could triumphantly claim that you came just for us, Holy One, but your gifts are poured out for all the broken, all the wandering, all the struggling. So may we be just like you, pouring out our lives and our treasures, so all might be blessed through you, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> this morning, certainly a joy is looking at the wall filled with prayer after prayer after prayer. It continues to enrich us in many ways. A celebration is the new life, a celebration of new life is the birth of a grandson to Peggy and Phil Havens. Celebration of eternal life and of Wendy and Shoup joining the church triumphant was celebrated yesterday. A celebration certainly is the joy of the Easter egg hunt with 150 children in search of those treasures. Prayers continue for Maureen Hall, who is in Lima in intensive care. Continued prayers for the recovery, uh, steady recovery of Pauline Andrews. Prayers for Dave Hard's father, who is declining. So prayers for Dave and Marty as they stand beside Herbert. Prayers for the family and extended family of Mike Peppel. And continued prayers for Lily Baticher, who remains in the hospital. We take all of our joys, our concerns, to God. Let us go to God in prayer. It is the silence, O oh God, that draws us close to you. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for our blessings, for the freedom we enjoy to worship freely, to pray openly, and to experience life as a community of believers. Today we are filled with unbounded joy as if we are children, again singing loud hosannas and waving palm branches in victory. We experience with exuberance and uncontained joy Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. But God, even as we begin this week in triumph, we know that we must face defeat silence, death, and darkness before the week is over. We are confident that out of the depth of this pain, we will once again experience redemption, hopeful that joy does indeed follow sorrow. Today we pray for the faithful around the world who daily and tragically suffer for loving you. We pray for a, a day filled with justice when injustice is no more. When oppression and abuse and hatred are no more. When we care for the well-being of others and actively work as your disciples toward this end. When our brothers and sisters of every race and gender and orientation and creed may be free to flourish in the grace of your love and the bounty of your care. We pray for the celebration of life. We pray for those who grieve. We pray for those who suffer at the hands of others, for those who battle addiction, 
for those who have lost their way. And in this hour, we pray for those who are approaching the hour of their death. Comfort, oh, comfort your people, oh God. Out of the silence and darkness, may they feel your presence this week. We pray that all who spiritually enter into your holy city on this day will be transformed. Holy and merciful God, through the Christ who rode into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey to change the world, you have shown us the way, the way to a better life. Give us now the faith and courage and humility to follow as Christ leads us into the week ahead. Give us the faith and courage and humility to live a life worthy of your calling. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and transform us into Christ's likeness that we may practice remembrance and reflect Christ and his teaching and his love for all humanity. And so it is in our own lives, O oh God, as we walk lonely paths, lead us out of personal darkness into a new light. Help us experience the contentment of silence and the joy of renewal. Be with us this week, O oh God. Loving God, this is our hope. This is our faith. This is our prayer. Hear us now, O oh God, as together we pray as Christ taught his disciples, saying, Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, this is the week. This is the week that matters. This is the week to throw aside all of the fanfare, all of the assumptions, all of the anger, all of the joy. Throw it away and focus. Focus on Christ, the one crucified, the one that makes things matter, that makes our lives matter, that makes the world matter. Let us go into this week practicing remembrance. Remembering that we are loved, claimed, forgiven, and set free.
People of God, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion, power, and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever.